Marco has been busy in the background um, during the few talks that we've had and his son has been absolutely brilliant and sent in a picture of what his son thinks a mine looks like. So we will share that with you later. Um, but without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, um, I give you Marco Komak, who's going to talk to us about the InFact project. Marco, over to you. Thanks, Sarah. Good morning to everybody and thanks for inviting me to participate at this wonderful conference. Uh, it's something that uh, reality uh, looks upon us in the future, I guess, uh, and it's much cheaper also. We don't need to spend money, but I do like to travel. Anyhow, my presentation is going to be about the Infect project, uh, which deals with a novel approach to mining exploration in Europe. And it's a, a rather vivid project from the partner's perspective, which you can see from the authors. Uh, and I come from the European Federation of Geologists as being one of the partner in the project. We've all seen that the uh, world is facing huge challenges uh, lately, and of course Europe is not uh, an exception. And as Europe wants to shift to the energy transition um, activities, there's a huge rising demand on various materials, raw materials and also metal alloys. And uh, in addition to that demand, we are still rather low in recovery of the existing or already used materials, uh, especially rare earth elements. And in addition to that, the mining in U Europe is not very well appreciated. So Europe strongly depends upon the imports from other continents. And I've stumbled on this, uh, this uh, survey of European Commission, it's from uh, 2013, but still it gives a good impression, a huge contradictory that uh, rules in Europe, what people actually want and what people need. And if you see uh, in comparison to other industries, mining and gas uh, companies rate really low. Only the bankers are worse than ourselves. So this is something that we need to, uh, to take into account and to ask ourselves, what can we do to approve this image? To uh, actually to improve, not approve, but to improve the image of mining and, um, and uh, extraction industries. So giving that uh, in mind, um, an idea was born and the consortium put together, which you can see on the right side of the, the slide, and the project was designed and submitted for the proposal and luckily it got uh, funded. So the INFECT was born and the INFECT project uh, looks at critical raw materials in Europe and also other uh, rather quintessential elements, chemical elements that will help the energy transition that Europe is set upon. And the project is basically uh, constructed of three pillars and the first one is to support the development of some novel and non-invasive exploration techniques then to include all relevant stakeholders in the process uh, and that means uh, not only the industry and the, um, the general uh, end users but also the NGOs that uh, we've been talking about in the past couple of days. And since we don't want to invent the wheel, we also are looking abroad to other continents, to other practices, to see what we can learn from them. And if we, my screen has gone down. Are you, you able can, to? You cannot move my slides, can you? <laughs> we, we can't, unfortunately, from here, Marco. Do you want to um, just keep talking through it? And what we can I'll, do for everyone is. Um... I'll do is, I'll just switch it like that. Perfect. So, what is it all about within Infect Project? There are several objectives, and one uh, objective is to establish a sort of physical laboratories in Europe. Uh, we call them reference sites where the novel technology could be tested on the ground, but not only, not only from the technical perspective, also from the social acceptance perspective, which is really important because if you cannot start the exploration by using 
specific technologies, then there's no, there's no way you're going to open a mine because you don't know what's there. So we've set up to establish three reference sites uh, and we wanted to cover um, geographically and socially representative areas. And of course, from geological perspective, also relevant areas where geology is very well known because we want to test the technology on what we actually know and how good can we see with the new technology what we know. And there were three reference sites uh, selected. One in Finland, that's the Sakati area. The, another one is the Gaia area in Germany. And in Andalusia, in Spain, we have actually two sites, but they are close together. So we treat them as, let's say, um, one site. Then we want to establish a certification procedure, some sort of guidelines that those that want to test the technology will follow through a sort of protocol. And with that, following the, the protocol in the right way, they would reach the credibility and also uh, test the social acceptance of the technology within the local uh, communities and that's very important as I said before and at the end in addition to those reference sites we also set up ourselves a goal uh, to develop or to draft a sort of white paper that would help the European Commission uh, with the guidelines how to achieve the sustainable framework for mineral exploration in Europe a sort of discovery map and that's also very important um, output of the project. But what, what I want to show here in my presentation is uh, an activity that we did back, well, that's already two years uh, in the past, but it's very informative and it goes sort of in line with what was just presented with Aldo's presentation, but it's more, fo uh, it's focused on Europe in, it has, and it has less, uh, less participants. So altogether, we've interviewed 3,000, a little above 3,000 uh, people with, within all the three countries where we have the reference sites. And we asked them about their opinion about mining and exploration. And here's, here are the results that we got. For all of those that are interested in the more detailed uh, results, there's a, a link on the left bottom side uh, of the slide where you can find uh, the report. So what are just a couple of key facts that we've learned? Uh, we've asked people how important is the mining in their country and now I will all, only go through the, uh, the joint results while here you can see that there are four um, bars. First one is a joint one, then the second one is Germany, the third one Spain and the fourth one Finland. And you can see that if we uh, see the people's perception of how important the mining is, uh, almost half of them say that in, the in their country mining is really important. And there's another quarter of them saying uh, that they are quite neutral. They don't know whether it is or it's not important. <clears throat> and only, <clears throat> only about a quarter of people fully disagree with this statement and there are some people that don't have the opinion. And when we ask them how well does the mining um, treat the environment, uh, environmental impact and we see the quite opposite uh, replies. There's less than one-fifth of people that actually uh, think that mining handles environmental issues really well and there's another fifth of the people that are neutral about it and there's more than half of people that think that mining is really bad for the environment and then again we have about 10 percent of people who are uh, who have no opinion on that and if we look at the all uh, questions that we post and sort of uh, extract the public attitude in the three countries altogether regarding the uh, the mining and, and exploration activities, we see that the positive uh, effects or attitude, attitudes are against uh, towards mining in economy. It brings benefits to economy. It brings benefits 
to being uh, independent in resourcing and it brings uh, positive uh, effects in employment in the community and some less positive but still positive in infrastructure while again mining they see totally negative effects of mining on the environment and whether mining is accepted in the community or not it varies it's around around neutral and what are the the key conclusions that that we got out of our um, survey is the positive ones first that again the employment and independency of the mining resources and economy benefit a lot and local infrastructure also but we also asked them uh, how they perceive the novel technologies borne by either drones and helicopters and they don't actually mind that much about those things flying above their heads while if we look at the negative impacts or perceptions of course again environment is the one that it's the most um, seen as being in the, uh, negative while some people see um, drones and helicopters as a sort of uh, noise source or invading their privacy which is totally understandable and of course uh, that is uh, um, the perception that it's not invented uh, and if we look at the sort of a general um, perception of the mining we have a constant of about 10 to 15 percent of people being totally negative against mining wherever we did the survey that was uh, uh, basically a constant and uh, interestingly the citizens uh, trust in accepting a mining industry or handling this mining industry by uh, the authorities is uh, vice versa the more they trust the mining industries the less they trust uh, the legal authorities and this is quite an interesting result uh, also and with that i hope i haven't been talking over time uh, i conclude my presentation thank you very much brilliant thank you so so much marco that was absolutely fantastic and you can hear all of our fantastic applause coming through to you um, from the other side of our microphones um, now we do have time for a, for a quick question um, and this question, um, so it comes in from Victor um, and also being built on some of the other chats that's going on. And this comes back to the public survey and specifically with regards to the acceptance of mining in a community where you showed that it was neutral. Um, so first part to that question is um, how big was the range? Was it a case where most people just thought it was, you know, kind of okay, but they didn't really have any opinion? Or did you have some people who were very much in favor and some people who really did not like the idea of mining? What was the range with regards to that? Well, we have to consider that these areas are um, quite different from the uh, population perspective. In Spain, uh, the local area is very much aware of the positive um, aspects of mining and uh, the main opposition doesn't come actually from the area but it comes from the national level so the perception of of mining in the local communities is quite quite positive uh, in germany i would say it's it's uh, uh, a neutral one while in finland it's interesting uh, because there are not actually any that huge uh, local communities living there there are of course uh, and the main uh, negative perspective was because of the um, deprivation of the environment although there are um, of course economical benefits but the Finns like the outdoors they love to enjoy it and as we know in Lapland where Sakati <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> where Sakati is located, there's a, a strong uh, outdoor activities going on. And uh, of course, that, uh, that brought in the negative uh, impact also. Brilliant. Thanks, Marco. And just um, to add to that question, when you ran the survey, did you run it only on existing mining communities or did you also include prospective mining communities? No, we only ran it... Uh, 
uh, mainly in the local communities of the reference sites, uh, but we try to, to cover a little bit wider uh, scope. So we included also uh, other um, representative groups from the countries that we, that we covered. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Marco. So ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause thank to you. say thank you to Marco and his presentation.